Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm the Theoretical Gamer. Um, okay, imagine this. You are sitting down, and you're the Game Master, and you are inventing your own fantasy world. And you are going to run your players through it. And it's a game of your own design. And pretty much, I mean, maybe you base it on D20. Maybe you may... The system doesn't matter. But basically what it is, is you have created this intricately, deta intricately detailed world. And it's got like politics between like like noble families, and it's got a and it's got a church that has an enormous amount of influence, and it's like so you have the noble versus church. But then you also have in the major cities a society on the verge of a renaissance, and you know so technology and science is starting to become a thing, and and how does that how does that interact with the church and and you, you know you have like tr you have trade guilds and you have deep you know all sorts of things right and then and then as an oh by the way thing you created this one other race called we'll call them the blurred and they're this this kind of like aboriginal tree people race with bark skin and they're off in this one little corner of the world you know this kind of in the woods and you you know because you had this idea of creating the whole colonial versus aboriginal at a moral battle and so, but, but for the most part, you've got this, you know, you know, you've got warriors and wizards dealing with this fantastic world, and you, and you say, okay, everyone make a character and come back, and we will start, we will start the campaign, and your five players go off and they scribble, scribble, blah, 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 yeah, and they come back, like, what are your characters? First guy, I'm playing a blurred. Oh, uh, you? Yeah, I'm playing a blurred too. Yeah, blurred for me. Blurred. Blurred. Oh, because no one wants to play the human. This is an exaggeration, you know. It really is. I mean, but, yeah, if you have another race besides human, no one will want to play the human because something, in something it's, like, it's like a cultural meme in our gamer society. Humans are boring. You know, if you, you know, no one wants to play the human because back in the old school D and D, you had the fight, you had race as class. If you wanted to play an elf or a dwarf, you were definitely something other. And then a D and D came out, and you can mix race and class, like play an elf fighter or a you know, or or a dwarven thief, and no one ever played a human again. Well, that's not true. In the earliest a D and D versions, uh. The, the races off the, the non-human races often had pretty severe and strangely arbitrary level limits which meant that people in order to play their favorite classes would play a human you know it's a it's a but for the most part yeah if people people would go out of their way to avoid playing the human because they're boring the reason I mention this is that I was I was on the Facebook page for the RPG Brigade, and people were talking about the you know the flavor of the month, which everyone is loving and with good reason, Numenera. And someone mentioned that oh it sucks that human is the only race you can play. Now there's a lot of variety within human. Human is a fan. I like human. Human is a good blank slate. It's a tabula rasa on which you can build any character you want. You, do you want, I mean, like, well, I want to play an elf. Well, play a human who is naturally woodsy and has a reverence for nature. You know? It's, you know, and... Alright. Side note. Elf. No such thing. There are many... You could go back to, like, Tolkien, of course, and Tolkien elves are a specific thing, and then you get to D&D elves, and they're another specific thing. And then you have, basically, and then I think like Dragon Age, elves are this kind of, they once ran the world, now they've been reduced to this hated second-class citizen, which to me is about as non elfy as you can get. You know, elves, because at least the image of elves that you have are their, you know, beautiful, perfect, and aloof, which is what I think draws people to elves, you know. It's, um... So it's like 
when people play races in D and D, it's for two reasons. One, they're attracted to the stereotype of, well, I think three reasons. One, they're attracted to the stereotype of the elf or the dwarf. They like the idea of the grizzled, beardy dwarf warrior, or the 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 tall, you know, the tall, slender, aloof elf wizard. They dig the stereotypes. That's cool. The other one is they like the stats. You know, like, ooh, the elf gets a bonus to this. And they also get, you know, low light vision. You know, low light vision. They love that one. And the other one. So what? What was. I've been up all night. The, what was the. Uh, like, or they just, you know. You know, that's the they want the stats. Or they like the stereotype. Or. Oh man, I had another one. Anyway, the point is, they they create they create these characters, and when they find and a lot of them play them in what I call the humans with pointy ears syndrome. It they they create you know okay elf wizard okay and then you know they have the elf powers and the elf stats, but once the play starts, they just become the party wizard, you know and. Either the whole elven background doesn't come up, or if it does, they ignore it and just want to play the party wizard, and and race becomes meaningless, right? It's um. Here's my thought: if you're gonna have race, make it mean something, right? Because let's be honest, elves and dwarves and halflings. They're, they're very human. They are. I mean, it, it's like you take, you take the humans and give them a certain, you know, you know, a certain personality trait. Like, like okay, elves are woodsy and they, uh, they are one with nature, and they're aloof and perfect. Which is, you know, in reality, if. If you had a woodsy race, they'd be a lot grungier and dirtier than elves are portrayed as being. Um, dwarves live in mines, and they and they're gruff and taciturn and like to drink and all that stuff. And that's you know, but these are all traits that a human could have. You know, Numenera actually does have a couple of non-human races, and they do it right. These are just these are two races that they have in the book under the optional rules section, and they are given as examples. And for the most part, um, they are done right because they are very inhuman. The first the first one is the Vargellan, very tall, angular, very non-human looking. They don't look like pretty humans. They look they got like a, their eyes are kind of off to the side, and they got a crest on their head, and they can reach into their chest and massage and rearrange their internal organs, and in so doing, they can shift their stats around, such so they can like boost their intellect at the cost of their might score, or they can lower their might to make themselves faster and give themselves speed. So, and it's something they can do like maybe a couple of times a day, and that's that's an in it's kind of an inhuman thing that they're able to do. Then. The other one is the Lattimor. The Lattimor is this huge hulking creature that has this kind of fungus attached to it. And the fungus and the Lattimor are both intelligent beings in a way, and they form a they form a symbiosis. So some usually they're in a kind of fugue state where it's both of them operating at once, but occasionally the big brute guy can take over, and in which case he's very, very you know, impulsive and angry and fighty, and or sometimes the fungus takes over, and it's very thoughtful and contemplative and intelligent, and it's and this is simply how this race operates, and it's how it natu and this is very natural to shift between these states as needed or desired, and it's like I said, these are 
the in the non-human races are very inhuman. They are not they are not humans with pointy ears. However, another so and it's like if you which is why I like the idea of if you're making a fantasy world, don't just throw in a bunch of races just to throw in a bunch of races. However, if you do decide to throw in a bunch of races, don't hold back. One of my favorite games, which I have done, reviewed before, is Talislanta. Talislanta, it's... I think it's the reason, it's the reason everyone wants to play a blurg in this hypothetical fantasy game I created is because... Everyone wants to be the beautiful and unique snowflake. They all want to be, you know, they don't want to be just another human character. And, of course, when everyone shows up to the table and has created a blurb, they're all kind of looking at each other, kind of glaring like, I was going to be the special one. We can't all play a blurb, and, of course, no one wants to say that because, you know, they don't want to admit that they're, you know, entitled little princesses who just want to be the special character. But... Talisana is great because everyone gets to be the beautiful and unique snowflake. There are so many different races and they're all on one little continent and they're all bumping into each other and they're all clashing with each other. And so, yeah, you can have like seven different players with seven different races and there are no, re there's really no humans in the game. There are a lot of humanoid races, which they are said to have a common ancestry. And there's a few that are a bit more bestial and a few that are a bit more out there and strange. And, you you know, it it works. It works. So either, so either, that's my advice. Don't, just either go all out or just go human. It's, uh... Now, naturally, if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, you know you kind of you can't really go too far from the tropes of Dungeons and Dragons. You got to have elves and dwarves, and half orcs and gnomes and all those races. And you know, but I think you I think you get you have to accept that you're going to get either bland stereotypes, or you're going to get humans with pointy ears. You know, like an elf who doesn't act elfy at all, and if you ask the player, he'll just say, oh, he's a nonconformist, and then go back to playing him the way he wants. You know, people who just chose them for the stats. But, so, yeah, this is just me rambling. This is just me going on about my, my sometimes self-contradictory thoughts about race and how they can be used. I think that the reason, I think the reason that I'm wary of people, you know, of, of adding races to new games is that people don't give them the uniqueness they deserve. They don't give, you know, if they're going to not be human, then they should be played as not human. If, if you want to play a human character, play a human character. Uh, you know, there's this, uh, give you an odd little example. There is in Talislanta um, like I said, one of the regions is this area where you can play this one, there's this one region called the Mirin Tundra Scout. The, the Mirin are this race of blue-skinned people that live way up in the north of Talislanta. They're immune to cold and, you know, and, you know, they're pretty badass in their way. So, and I, and I remember reading on a forum somewhere, a guy basically talked about he ran a game of Talislanta and he was going to set it in, you know, in that northern region. In, you know, and basically said, this is a game with dozens and dozens of templates to choose from. And you can have infinite variety of characters and style and, and, tr and types. And ba but he basically sat down with his group and says, I'm going to try something. We're, I'm setting it in this region, and I'm picking your template for you. I'm picking your class. All of you at the table are playing the Mirren Tundra Scout, which effectively, you s you're going to have characters that are 
very close to being identical. They're going to have very, very similar stats. They're going to have their skill lists are going to be the same. They're going to be, you know, you can tweak the templates a little, but for the most part, you can, you're, they're going to be very, very similar, you know? And they sat down and they figured out what their characters were. And from what I heard, it worked. You had, they had a group of characters that were, you know, their stats were very much the same. They were different in every other way. It was like creativity thrives on restrictions. If you add a set of restrictions, you people will find a way to be creative within those restrictions, right? You play D&D, &D, you have someone playing an elf and he plays him kind of elfy, and the dwarf is played kind of gruff and dwarfy. Oddly enough, in a world like that, restricting someone to human makes them be kind of can make them be more creative they have to figure out because a human can be anything and they have to figure out what that is that's and i'm not even sure if i'm making sense anymore so i am going to end the video here thank you very much have a good night